Judy Dalton is one of Minnesota's favorite authors. Her books are enjoyed for their humor, their delightful characterizations, and for the way they convey the essence of childhood. Kathleen Baxter, Children's Services Coordinator with the Anoka County Library, is here today to discuss the books with the author. We are very happy today to have Judy Delton, a Minnesota author, visiting with us. Uh, whenever I go to my hometown, I think of Laura Ingalls Wilder, who lived there in Walnut Grove, and whenever I go to Mankato, I think of Betsy and Tacy. And now whenever I drive through Norwood, I think of oh, Kitty. Yeah. <laughs> Kid. Oh, yeah. And great. Um, Kitty is uh, yourself, I understand from what I have read about you. You grew up in St. Paul, and you have written a lot of books which are firmly rooted in Minnesota, where people go to Dayton's, they go to the Guthrie, yeah, they live right. on the streets that did they we go have to the Guthrie? Somebody did. did one they? of the I books. <laughs> I forget so fast. <laughs> out of sister, sight, out Jody's of mind. Sister. Jody's sister. Is that sister. right? Oh, yeah, I remember that now. Um, okay. But we mm -hmm. were wondering how much of those things are true of Judy Dalton. <laughs> <laughs> I think almost all of them. You know, fiction, the most important thing in fiction is character. And that's what you start with. Actually, I started, maybe we weren't going to ask this, but I started writing the kitty books because I'd been writing picture books for a long time and I was realizing how many things were coming out that were ethnic, that got so popular, like Ruth's, you know, growing up black. And I thought, at that time, in 1978, no one outside of Powers and a few pe not many people had written about growing up Catholic. And so... Uh, I thought, I will try writing about growing up Catholic in the 40s. Now people tell me I was writing history, you know, historical fiction like Maud Hart Lovelace. But anyway, now the, I forgot the question already again. Well, I wanted you to tell how us How much was true. How yeah. much of this is Almost true? Almost everything, I think, was based on truth, especially. You know, you take things that happen, um, like my friends, um, and they really, of course, existed, and you use them. Um, Elizabeth Bowen has said you can't invent physical detail. You know, you, you can only uh, use what there is, what you've experienced. And I had two friends, just like Kitty did. I was, had the same problems. I was always in the middle. And I had a friend of mine, Shirley, who lives in Boston now, and I, I see her quite often. She was Eileen. She always was the wild one, the one that took tap dancing, the one, that, you know. And then I had a very holy friend who went to Mass every morning. <laughs> so what you do... I what never, happened to her, by the way? <laughs> I never, I've never seen her since. Oh, I have no yeah. idea where she is or what happened to her. Um, probably something tragic. <laughs> <laughs> Did she really crawl over the bridge? Or? <laughs> no, no, okay. she didn't. She never changed that much. Oh, I needed okay. a change in a character there, but I don't, when I knew her, she hadn't. Um, but I, I think you take a character that you know basically uh, what I do is just exaggerate the qualities, you know. Eileen never really did, wasn't quite as wild and Margaret Mary was never quite as holy, but I exaggerated them and that makes the character stronger, you know. What school did you really go to then? Yeah, Holy Spirit was St. Anthony's. Um, holy Spirit is in St. Paul in McAllister Groveland Highland Park. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up on Jefferson Avenue there and um, so Holy Spirit was with Father Holloway and Father Byrne and, and all of Father Morn. We, uh, I went almost all my years. And were you an only there. child like Kitty? I was an only child like Kitty, exactly. So was Eileen and Margaret Mary really came from a large family, you know. So. And your mother so really kept been... your house that clean? Oh, <laughs> yes, and you must realize she was also, in two good friends, she was also duck. Uh-huh. See? So uh, remember how clean Duck was. Yes, I do. And um, so Kitty's mother also was the same way. Uh, it's funny how somebody keeps, my mother keeps showing up in all my fiction over and over and over, you know. You keep writing, I keep writing about the same people, which um, well, you'd say, like to branch out. Now, Kitty, well, okay, Kitty also went to Norwood, and I see that church, yeah. and I assume yeah, that's, that's the one. Is that assumption? <laughs> that's got to be the one. Is that Assumption Church in Norwood? Yeah. You know, it's Norwood's it's closer big. today. Um, when I was little and we would drive in my aunt's 1930s Chevrolet, it would take forever to get to Norwood, go through the cemetery out there, and, and it was the country. It was, there was no, not much of a town. And my dad had grown up on a farm in Norwood, and so, uh, so I thought, well, I'll use it. Uh, that's one thing that's a kind of a perk of being a writer is to 
save all the things you like or kind of capture your history and put it down for a long time. Well, you know, neat for the rest of us too. That's nice. One thing that I couldn't believe hardly when I read it in the book was about the slot machines. Oh yeah, they there were slot the machines all over, and in butcher shops, and you know, all the time. Yeah. There Did you those. really win a lot of money? I don't remember that. <laughs> no, I don't remember that. <laughs> those little things were a little exaggerated, but I think basically the truth of it is mostly the facts. I really got homesick. Um, my aunt worked with these German, this German family that used to terrify me. They couldn't speak English, and we were sure they were Nazis then during the war. <laughs> and my aunt would speak German to them, and I was stuck out there on that farm, and I was so homesick, the real meaning of homesick, you know. And I ran away, and I ran back to town, and uh, of course, Katie came back and called my mother, and they came and got me, and it was humiliating. But, uh, <laughs> um, but so many of those things are based on the truth. Uh, about a, such a different life than it is now, you know. Makes you feel really old and removed from it. Well, another of your popular characters is um, Angel. Yeah. And backyard Angel is the first one. Mm -hmm. Angel, and excuse me. Who is okay. she? <laughs> is she you too? <laughs> answer your questions before. <laughs> Did you have a question? You already guessed. Um, <laughs> Angel was my daughter. We lived in Toma, Wisconsin. And I started writing this because my editor at Houghton uh, who so graciously bought the kitty books and loved them and encouraged me, uh, said we'd love another series with another character, a contemporary character. And I said, oh, I can't write that kind of thing. And, you know, you sit there and you brew and you think, what would I write about? And I thought, well, I wrote about my own life. I may as well branch out and steal my children's life. And uh, I used to look out in the back steps, and Jennifer was always sitting back there, and she was always pouting. She as it says in the angel book, she cried from you know from the time she was born to she was, I don't think she smiled till she was eight, and um, so that's what you need as a character, a strong character, and that's all I had when I started the, the series, was Jennifer on the back porch, um, pouting. What you know. about Rags? I just love Rags. Well, I'm mad for him. <laughs> J isn't he cute? <laughs> yes. You read Angel's Mother's Wedding. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just about, I just finished yeah. it yesterday, and yeah, nice. I just loved it. <laughs> I'm working on Angel's Mother's Baby now. Did yeah. you? There's an episode in Angel's Mother's Wedding where Rags is to be the ring bearer for the wedding, and he thinks it's the ring bearer. He's, he thinks he's going to wear a bear suit and carry the rings, and he is rehearsing to be a bear and to growl as he goes down the aisle. And um, I just thought that, that was, was a funny delightful. thing. Delightful. You know, a lot of th yeah. How did I? Do how did you I think, think of that? that? That's <laughs> right, Kathy. Answer, answer I answer them and then I tell you what you asked. Um, that was a direct. You know, so many people will say, "I've got something for you to write about. I've got something for you to write about," and usually none of it ever works. Mm -hmm. But she, my editor, wonderful editor at Houghton, had said. You know, I was to a wedding, and this this little boy that was going to be ring bear thought he was going to be a bear and wear a bear suit. I said, that's a riot. I'll use it. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Half hour. Anyway, um, that's how that happened. I thought it was it was really a direct thing. You know, that Ray just took well, it and used it, right? It was it just was. a great, the whole episode of the wedding was wonderful. Rudy in his clown suit, half clown suit. The angel's mother wearing an identical dress with the maid of honor. I loved yeah. it. I just loved it. I don't know. That is so nice. In Angel's mother's boyfriend, remember the green ham? Yes. That happened to a friend of mine, and my friend came over and said we had a terrible Thanksgiving. My, we went to church and came home, and my mother was cooking a turkey. We opened the oven, and the turkey was purple. <laughs> and I said, my God, that sounds like something I can use. And much later, they, they had to throw it out. They had nothing to eat. Everything was closed. And um, that was on Thanksgiving. I used it as, a, as an Easter scene with a ham. But it happened that one of the kids had dyed their jeans in that roaster and thought they washed it out, but it was that stuff clung to the sides, so the turkey turned purple. But I think that's the thing about writing. You have to know what to use and what you can't use. You know, what would make a good story? Well, and just Angel's fun. name changing from O'Leary to Papadopoulos. Yeah. Uh, yeah, wasn't that fun? I think that a lot of kids can really relate to that today. And just exactly. even you're thinking of that, that's wonderful. That is true. I hate to write books just to be trendy, but if it fits in, that that, that would be, and it is a universal thing, especially today, it works out nicely. What about only Jody? Who is... 
Jody was Jamie. That whole scene in Jody uh, was when I took him. I went out. Of, when I wanted him to go to St. Agnes. I took him out of the public school and put him in St. Agnes, which I called St. Gertrude's in the book. Yeah, and almost everything happened. He was so reluctant. They were thrown in with kids in the kindergarten, you know, and things. And he thought it was awful. They had to wear ties, shirts and ties. So, um, but I thought that was too good to waste. You can't waste any of your life, you know. You have to just. Well, use another it thing up. you've done recently is now here's a mystery you've written. I uh, I was surprised yeah. to see you trying your hand that at a mystery. That was again my editor's suggestion. I had the greatest for ten years. I've had the greatest editors at Houghton Mifflin in Boston, and they're gone now. Um, you know, have have uh, quit, stay home with their children, raise children, and. It's so different. Um, fortunately, I, at the very same time, like serendipity, it just happened that the Dell series came up, which I'm doing to take its place, mm -hmm. kind of. But I really missed working with those editors. My editor, Andrea, there had uh, said, I think next you better write a mystery. I said, I, I don't, can't write a mystery. <laughs> what do you say, write a mystery? I don't write mysteries. And she said, yeah, that's the thing about a good editor. They just assume you can. She, we both loved Ruth Rendell, and we read all the <laughs> British, every British mystery writer there was. And she said, of course you can write a mystery. And I kept saying, I can't write a mystery, Andrea, I can't write a But in the back of your mind, you think, Andrea thinks I can write a mystery. So, and it's a very mini mystery, you know. But nevertheless, it gave me confidence. So Would you like to do another one sometime, or is that? I did another one that was a failure. No one wants it. I, I, uh, thought it was very funny. It was set on the ocean and all the children were named with ocean names like Blue and Reef and Pier. And uh, maybe it was too much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, um, uh, you said you are publishing a new series from Dell. Could you tell us something yeah, about that? that one I'm so excited about because, uh, because it's such a big thing and I've never had all this publicity. You know, they put them on the catalogs and there, there's so much promotion with them. And usually my books are hardcover and they're in libraries and schools, but they're not the kind that sell wildly at bookstores. You know, they're mm -hmm. in all schools and libraries. But um, this is a kind, of course, that they have a cardboard container set up just like the romances, you know. And they're going to say, and um, Alan Tigran's illustrating him who did Ramona. And so he's so famous for Ramona that I would think that they would do well, and, and they're, the pictures are so cute. So, and I'm doing a book a month, there's 10 of them, 10 of them, just when I think I can't do it again, you know, <laughs> then, I, then I do. In fact, I'm going to really miss them. They're called Pee Wee they Scouts, the and Pee -wee Scouts. Wh what are they about, really? If there's 10 of them, this is a lot. Uh, yeah, um, just everything that happens in Scouts, actually, they're, they're very, they're specific, but general things, not, uh, you know, you take getting a first aid badge, and hilarious things happen, very much the humor of Kitty and Angel. Mm -hmm. Only they're for smaller children. That bridge for um, picture book to novel with the first chaptered books like the Polk Street School. Yes. Oh, we really need books like that, and kids That's really like them a lot. That's encouraging Kathleen to hear. I'm glad I'm not writing in a vacuum. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> we can all really no. use them. How, yeah. how do you get ideas for a whole series like that? I mean, every month, how well, Again, I have been very fortunate with editors. Um, George um, was the one that approached me and asked me to do them, and this, uh, my editor and friend Lori in New York has uh, been such a help. She'll call just to talk and say, let's talk about what this should be about, and she'll give me ideas. Uh, they're just off the top of her head, but then you kind of, it helps because it gives me some direction. I sometimes use them, sometimes I don't, you mm -hmm. know, but it's nice to talk about them with her. And she spends a lot of the time doing that with me. And um, things that would be plausible and in character. I have Sonny, who's a mama's boy, you know. And I mean, they have a skating party with the mothers, with the father. It's supposed to be a father-son skating party. Of course, Sonny has no father. He brings his mother. She's the best skater. And um, anyway, they, they all have a specific character that are fun to work with. And they will be coming out in July of 88? June, eight. probably June. June of 1988. Yeah, mm -hmm. this year. This and, is 1988. Well, Judy Dalton is um, certainly one of Minnesota's most famous 
authors. Oh, that's a nice word. <laughs> I think you are, definitely, <laughs> especially for, for younger children, of which we don't have nearly, nearly enough. But um, I don't know, you've got all sorts of books. I don't know, how many books have you published for children at this point? About Do you have any? 58. 58. Think, yeah, since 1971. Um, when I started writing in 1971. Mm -hmm. Well, we appreciate very much your having us with you today, and thank you very I much for coming. Talking to you. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you. Heron Gardner, his children Noah and Fiona, both students at Talmud Torah Day School, find that working together as a family is fun, especially if you have a Judy Dalton book to work with. Once there was a goose who wanted to be a writer. Everyone said, silly goose, you can't be a writer. How many geese do you know who write books? None. But Goose was a diehard. Day after day she wrote short stories about the education of baby goslings, middle-sized stories about the habits of homing pigeons, poems about Japanese songbirds, but the best thing she ever wrote was a long story about an absent-minded bear. She was so pleased with it that she flew to Bear's house. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Why, I can hardly keep my pin feathers on. Well, I just know that Bear is going to love my story. Ah, here's his house now. Well, I hope he's home. Well, where is he? Do -de do do do. Somebody's at the door. Well, hello, Goose. Oh, Bear, I've just got the most wonderful news. You see, I don't tell me you won a million dollars in the lottery. Oh, Goose, I'm so excited for you. No, Bear, no, it's nothing like that. You see, you're going to be on Jeopardy. What? You're going to win all those wonderful prizes. Well, Goose, I'll just go turn on my TV. A do -de do 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 a do No, no, Bear, no. I'm not talking about a TV show. Don't tell me, Goose. Don't tell me. I want to think about this. Oh, no. Hmm. Oh, no. Hmm. Uh, a goose? Yes, Bear. Goose, what were we talking about? My news, Bear. My wonderful news. You see, I just wrote a book. A book? Yes, a book. Geese don't write books. Cheese Louise. I mean, who ever heard of a goose writing a book? You're going to love this book, Bear. There's a bear in it. Oh, there is. Well, in that case, uh, <clears throat> maybe I might enjoy reading it. Here, Bear, now take it and read it. Let me know what you think. Okay, Goose, I will. Now, let's see. Uh, uh, bear went out and oh, The suspense is killing me. I just hate to wait. Well, what do you think, Bear, huh? Let me have it. Goose, I haven't finished reading it yet. Jeez Louise. Read faster, Bear. Come on. Faster, Bear! Faster! Well, what do you think, huh? 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 Goose, it's silly. What? It's silly. Bears are not absent-minded. Cheese! Louise! This is fiction, Bear. It's not true. Well, just the same. Bears are not absent-minded. Oh, no! And I ought to know that. Well, now, listen, Goose. You ought to change that bear character to somebody else. Somebody like a, like who, bear? Well, let me think, like a, oh, I got it, I got it. Change the bear to a professor. What? Everybody knows professors are absent-minded. Bears are not. Oh, bother. Now, I've got to go home, rewrite this whole story. Well, this is just going to take me forever. I only hope my quill feathers last. Goose went home. She wrote the story over. She changed the bear to a professor. It took her four hours and twelve minutes. Then she put her pencil behind her ear and went to see the professor. <coughs> well, I've worked so hard. I certainly hope that the professor likes my story. 
But you know, he can be very, very critical. Ah, here's his house. Hope he's home. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, N, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, I, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, N, Z. Now I've said my ABCs. What do you think of me? Bravo, 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 professor! Hello, Goose. Uh, good to see you. Oh, Professor, I've just uh, written a book. Would you read it, please? Well, it's not as though I have all the time in the world, Goose. I'm a busy professor. Just look at all this work I have to do. Well, does that mean you're not going to read my story? I'll fit it in, Goose. I always have time for a friend. Oh, good. Oh, wait, I'll need to find my glasses. Hmm. But, Professor... Now, where did I leave them? Hmm. Professor, hmm. Professor. Hmm, they must be around here somewhere. Hmm. Professor, hmm. Professor, you don't wear glasses. Oh, of course. I keep forgetting. Well, now, will you read my story, please? Here. Mm. I'm sorry, Goose. I don't like it. It feels wrong. But you haven't even read it. Yes, I did. I sped read it. I speed read everything you know. Well, maybe, Professor, if you slowed down, you would enjoy it more. No, no, no. That's not the point. The chief difficulty is the main character. He's terribly flawed. He's what? A mistake. You've made the main character an absent-minded professor. Oh, no. Professors are not absent-minded. I mean, it's as plain as, as plain as. Hmm. Now, what was I saying? My story, Professor. My story about the professor, Professor. Ah, yes. It's as clear as can be. Change the professor to a second-grade teacher. Second-grade teachers are in the news a lot these days, and they're certainly absent-minded. Do you really think that's going to help? Absolutely, absolutely. Now I've got to get back to my work. The e f g h i j k l m n o p a second-grade teacher? Oh, no. That means I've got to rewrite this story all over again. Oh, my poor old quill feathers. When Goose got home, she sat down. Maybe he is right, she thought. He is a professor, after all. So she wrote the story over again. She made the professor a second grade teacher. It took her six hours and 14 minutes. When she finished, she had wing cramp. This is the last time, she said. I'm not showing this story to another friend. No one will see it until it is a book. Goose typed the new story carefully. Then she put it in an envelope. She put a stamp on it. She wrote rush and red letters on the back. She wrote the name of the book company on the front. Then she went out to mail it. Now well, let's see. There's got to be a mailbox around here somewhere. Hmm. Ah, yes. Oh, there it is. First class, special delivery, Panda Press, here comes your big chance. Well, gee, now all I can do is go home and wait. Wait, wait, wait. Jeez Louise, but I hate to wait. <laughs> Went up for Ms. Goose Gray. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. Panda Press. They're going to make my story into a book. Well, where is it? Let me have it. Not so fast. There's postage due. Oh? Well, how much? Thirteen cents. Oh, all right. Here. Now, give me my letter. Hmm. Let's see now. Dear Goose. That's me. Dear Goose, just tell us in 25 words or less why you love Sudsy Dudsy. Sudsy Dudsy? 
Hey, this is not from Panda Press. Well, I never said it was, did I? <laughs> well, I gotta get going, Goose. Got a lot more of these to deliver. Some people these days. Well, I wonder what I am gonna hear from Panda Press. Wait, wait, wait. That's all I ever seem to do is wait. The next day, the postman handed Goose a card. It said, give blood for sick geese, 4 p.m. Tuesday, City Hall. On the following day, he brought Goose a copy of Tay Magazine. Each day, Goose waited for him, but he never brought her a letter from Panda Press. Finally, Goose became very discouraged. Oh, oh, it's no use. It's no use. Panda Press is never going to publish my story. I'm just a silly old goose, after all. A goose. Goose, is something wrong? I mean, you seem so sad. Oh, oh, I've, I've worked so hard, and now nobody's ever going to read my story. Not even one little tiny word of it. Oh. Well, why not, Goose? Because Panda Press isn't going to publish my story, that's why. Now get out of here and let me suffer in peace. Well, before I go, Goose, would you mind signing for this letter? Oh, all right. Well, what is it not that I really care? Special delivery letter from Panda Press. What? Oh, 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 give it to me. Give it to me. Oh, I, I don't know if I even dare open this. Oh, oh, here, you read it. I got a bad case of wing flutter. Okay, Goose. Dear Goose, we will be happy to make your story into a book, but it must be about a absent-minded bear instead of a second grade teacher signed Panda Press. Well, can you beat that? They liked my first story the best. Bravo, bravo, Goose. Why, thank you. Bravo. <laughs> She took the first story about the absent-minded bear out of her desk drawer. I always did like this story the best, she said. Then she took out a red pen. She turned to the last page of her story. In big red letters at the bottom of the page, she wrote the end. Thanks to Judy Dalton, Heron, Fiona, and Noah Gardner, and all of you for joining us for All About Kids. This has been a presentation of Hennepin County Library in conjunction with the Twin Cities Metropolitan Library Service Agency.